When I first heard about the march today, the rally, I was just so happy because it was something for farmed animals, for animals that people eat, billions and billions of them. More animals are bred and reared and slaughtered for the food industry than for anything else where there's animal abuse. There's vivisection, there's hunting, there's fur, there's circus, there's racing, and as horrible, disgusting, and immoral as those things are, and it's wonderful that we spend so much time fighting against them, the numbers that suffer for those things are actually small compared to the billions and billions of animals that die for food. It just doesn't bear thinking about. And they suffer within the law. They're kept in conditions that if we were to keep our cat in those conditions, we would be prosecuted. Well, we should be prosecuted. And Jeffrey Masson, in his brilliant book, The Pig Who Sent to the Moon, he said, there's no such thing as farm animals. They're not a special species. They're animals who are being farmed. They have the same feelings, the same passions, the same suffering and pain and discomfort as all other animals have. If we really were a nation of animal lovers, we would all be vegan. <laughs> continue to eat animals and they eat them by deceiving themselves or by being deceived by saying well it's all done humanely isn't it and the slaughter's fine you know it's all controlled and there's vets there and every time anyone goes into slaughterhouses or goes into farms every time there's an undercover they, dec they discover cruelty and we've got the RSPCA, so-called Freedom Food, and even on their farms and slaughterhouses, we've heard about the breaches of regulations and the cruelty and the suffering. And I personally find it quite disgraceful that an organization that was set up to protect animals should actually be marketing their flesh. We've, re we've recently heard an awful lot about halal and halal and kosher slaughter and people get quite wound up about it and it almost gives the impression that the stunning process is absolutely fine and that makes it all humane but we mustn't have any of that dreadful halal or kosher slaughter. Well quite honestly if you think about and I believe Andrew Tyler mentioned it, Animal Aid's brilliant undercover investigation of several slaughterhouses showing the stunning process it was actually as cruel and could be worse than any of those other methods. In fact, if you're going to be slaughtering animals in mass numbers in slaughterhouses where people are paid a piece rate for the animals that they slaughter, you are never ever going to get what some people call humane slaughter. Although how we could ever describe a slaughter of any living creature as humane, I'm just bewildered to even imagine. Almost 16 years ago, I got involved with animal rights because I lived five minutes from Shoreham Harbour and I used to cycle down there every day. And um, as you know, the rest is history on that one. And we don't appear to have any animals being exported live from this country. But I've just recently read through the very, very detailed booklet that's been collated from reports by undercover organisations um, got together and collated by Mark from Kale, Kent Against Live Exports, and um, it was about the export, ongoing export of calves, young, young, young calves, from Ireland, from Rosslare to Cherbourg in France. That's a journey of 17 to 20 plus hours, unweaned calves, some of them, on a ship. And when they get to the other side, there are staging posts where the animals are supposed to be rested, unloaded, rested, uh, fed and watered, and they kept, should be kept for 12 hours. Well, the drivers don't stop at those staging posts. 
Um, and some do and stop for a few hours and a lot of them just go on from the staging post. They stop there to get their papers stamped so that when they hand in their log, they've got the relevant stamp on there from the different staging posts. There's footage of calves, baby calves. Can you imagine it? What sort of scum would hit them? Calves being hit. And the investigators themselves were attacked. And governments are doing nothing, including our own. As soon as you've got profit and animals together, you can guarantee there'll be cruelty. If I can quote from Isaac Bashevis Singer, he was a Jew and an acclaimed Yiddish writer, and he escaped from the Holocaust. And he said, for the animals, it's an eternal Treblinka. And if you ever get the opportunity, read the book by Charles Patterson, An Eternal Treblinka, because it is the most astounding book that I've ever read, and I've bought copies for people. And he was making the analogy between the concentration camp and how animals are treated today. And he was offered chicken at a meal in his honor, and he refused it. And somebody next to him said, um, is that for health reasons? And he said, yes, for the health of the chicken. Great. <laughs> I've got a sign in my window. I put it up. I sit in my front window on my laptop, and I put a board up in my window, and it says, if you love animals, stop eating them go vegan and I sit there working and the number of people that go past and read that sign I even had a guy the other day come and take a photo of it but I've listened to people as they go past they stop they read it not everybody but and I hear the conversation starting up as they walk away now if I've only turned one person veggie or vegan from reading that sign that's a lot of animal lives so we are growing in number Definitely. I mean, you go, you, you look at food, you go into, go into shops, and you see th labels that say suitable for vegetarians and vegans. The word vegan, 20 years ago, was like for someone from, a, like a Vulcan, out of space. Um, but now the word vegan is so acceptable, and you see vegan food everywhere. And it really is down to us to get out there and educate people. And I think we should go away from here today, all making a pledge that we will go and get all those stickers and leaflets that are languishing in a box somewhere in our house. Because I'm sure we've all got them sitting there somewhere and every so often we take them out for a demo or if we do a stall. But we should get them out, take them out with you every time you go out and just put them around somewhere. The animals are counting on us because we are all they've got. Thank you.